Welcome to today's Global Connections program. I'm Bill Miller. Today we're going to take a look at a very interesting organization that's working with the least developed countries, the landlocked developing countries, and the small island development, developing states. These countries comprise a very important part of the world, and we're going to look at some of the challenges that are confronting them now. My guest today is an expert on this group. My guest today is the Her Excellency, the Undersecretary General and High Representative for the United Nations Office for the Least Developed Countries, Landlocked Developing Countries, and Small Island Development States, Undersecretary General Fekita. Thank you for letting me use the abbreviated form yes. of your monosyllabic yes. uh, title. Yes. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Welcome to today's Global Connections program. Thank you. I appreciate Thanks, you being with me today. Let's start off, you, there are three different categories here, and these are all yeah. so extremely important. Let's start off with the least developing countries, yes. and just uh, talk about, in general terms, uh, how many least developing countries are there, uh, and then we can get into the criteria yes. of how a country can move yes. from a least developed country and graduate off that list. Yeah. Um, thank you, uh, Bill. The countries that uh, my office works with are the most vulnerable countries in the UN uh, membership. Um, so there's 91 countries uh, in total. Uh, and then uh, it is divided into these three uh, main groups. Um, the least developed countries are of the poorest countries in the world. And uh, so there's 47 uh, countries uh, in the least uh, developed uh, country uh, mm -hmm. category. Uh, and a and, uh, population of uh, a billion, a billion people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's one-seventh, or a little yeah. less than one-seventh yes. of the total population in the world. And you mentioned 91 countries. Yes. That's remarkable because there are 193 countries yes. in the UN General Assembly, so yes. it's almost half yes, of that that's group. Right. Yes. Uh, that's uh, very good. Now, the uh, before I forget it, we're going to put your website out there. It's www.unohrlls. Dot org, yes. and we're going to put it on the lower thirds yeah. so people can see yeah. it yes. and, and not have to worry about writing it down. Let's talk about the least developed countries. As I understand it, there are three criteria that a country is qualified uh, or has to qualify for to be a least developing country. Is that correct? Yes, that's, uh, that's uh, correct. And um, the, the criteria is for the country to meet at least two, two of mm -hmm. those uh, criteria at two uh, rounds of, uh, of reviews, or if um, the, con the uh, country uh, meets uh, double the, uh, the, the GNI per capita uh, threshold. And then uh, they they graduate out of the LDC group. Okay, GNI is that gross national income or? Yes, what? yes, that's okay, right. GNI uh, per capita. Per capita. Okay. Yes, yes, <laughs> All right. Yes. Very good. And so they have to meet two of the three yes, categories. Categories. I yes. See. Yes. Now, if they progress, and some countries are moving in that direction, yes. as I recall. Um, Cape Verde, Cabo Verde, yes. um, Equatorial Guinea, yes. uh, and I think there are about three, uh, three more, about five altogether, that have graduated. Uh, do you, do they, does the UN look at their economic performance and how their services are being provided, at maybe looking at the educational levels? How do they determine when they're ready to graduate? Yes. Um, so the the first uh, criteria is is uh, the per capita uh, income uh, mm -hmm. criteria, and it's about uh, one thousand one thousand. Um, and then the second, they look at the uh, human development um, index, mm -hmm. is is uh, also the uh, the second uh, criteria. Then they also look at economic uh, vulnerability, and uh, and then there's there's a, a independent group that. Uh, looks at uh, how these countries are, are doing, and um, over the since the LDC uh, category was uh, set up in 1971, um, five countries have have graduated, mm -hmm. um, and we have um, since 2015 uh, nine countries uh, on the list that have um, uh, met the minimum threshold. And uh, there's going to be another review next year, so that will uh, uh, determine, um, you know, the the countries that will um, graduate. But uh, and then uh, we anticipate that there will maybe another four or five countries will uh, uh, be on the list. Mm 
That's good. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure they're ready to graduate and move off of it. Uh, you mentioned earlier there were 47 countries, uh, yes. least developing yes. countries. It, it's difficult to take all 47 and paint them with a broad brush, yes. but is is there are there one or two issues that are challenges that they're confronting as a group? I know each individual country has its own yes. challenges, obviously, but is there something out there that is, such as climate change or something yes. that, that they're dealing yeah. with or yes. poverty or yes. whatever the case might be? Yes. Uh, extreme poverty is, is uh, one of the uh, main uh, challenges of the uh, LDC uh, uh, group. Uh, there's also um, a high uh, level of vulnerability to shocks because uh, the bulk of the LDC countries, uh, you know, depend on on agriculture and just or one or, or two uh, commodities. So that uh, you know, when there's um, um, changes in in prices, it really impacts mm -hmm. on on how the, those countries are, are doing in terms of um, economic uh, development. Yeah, so that that is a, a big challenge. For the the least uh, developed countries. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, if we could shift over to the landlocked yeah. developing yes. countries who <laughs> have some similar problems, perhaps, but they yes. have one very major problem is that they have no access to the sea. They're yes. they are landlocked. Yes. Uh, now, did you say there were twenty two of those? Um, thirty thirty two. Oh, thirty two. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Thirty two. Right. Um, so there's uh, thirty two um, uh, member states in the in the landlocked um, category. Uh, about half a million uh, people, and um, uh, 17 of these countries are also in the uh, uh, LDC category as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, so their landlockedness has also, uh, you know, ha had major impact on on th their development, and and so um, you know, there's a big challenge. They're they're landlocked, and they're also uh, least developed uh, countries. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have to have good working relationships with your neighbors around you yes. if you're going to be able to move your goods and yes. services and your people yes. and to cross to some body of water or, or just get out of your country, yes. you know, unless you take a flight out or something yes. like that. Yes. Is that a challenge to them, so some that's of them? That's a major um, challenge um, for the uh, land landlocked developing countries is uh, transport and transit um, arrangements. Um, because the, you know the cost of uh, uh, getting goods um, out of into exports and also imports mm -hmm. um, is uh, is very high, and also in terms of the length of time it takes for uh, transport and shipment of uh, containers um, as well. So uh, you know those uh, high cost and difficulty in uh, transportation also impacts on on how well they can do in 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 trading as well so so their trade is also uh, severely uh, impacted by th by that um, and as you also uh, noted it also depends on um, you know the uh, relationship with the with the transit you know the countries that they have to trans transit through and um, some of these countries um, share borders with you know, up to eight, <laughs> you know, eight neighboring countries. So they have to organize, uh, you know, eight um, different arrangements and uh, agreements, you know, to uh, to uh, transport um, mm -hmm. uh, goods through through the borders. Yeah, that can certainly be a challenge. Yes. it certainly can. Yeah. Yes. Now the other group is the small island developing states, <coughs> and I think there are 38 of those. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. It, what are some of the? What are one or two of the yes. major challenges yes. confronting them as a broad group? Yes. Yes. Um, so the um, small island uh, developing uh, states uh, also has uh, transportation uh, problems, uh, and 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 it's uh, the the isolation um, uh, that that is. Uh, uh the um, issue uh, with them, um, climate change is is, is definitely uh, one of the issues uh, that is a priority for the island, uh, small island developing uh, states. Um, economies of scale, uh, because uh, uh, because of the smallness, um, and uh, you know being able to uh, produce uh, goods. Um, at at a large um, large uh, scale, and the cost of 
uh, producing uh, those goods uh, as well is, is, is an issue for small island uh, developing states. Now, again, they are, some are very vulnerable to, especially climate change. Yes. We see that yeah. the glaciers are melting, the seas are rising, desertification is taking place. We've seen, in your area of the world, you're from Tonga. Yes. And, of course, there was this horrific cyclone. I think it was Winston yes. that hit Fiji yes. um, not too many years ago. Yes. Well, it's just devastated that poor country. But uh, is, uh, is climate change one of the main issues or the main issues that, uh, the main issue that they're dealing with? Yes. For small island um, uh, developing countries, um, climate change is, is a, a major uh, issue. A, a lot of the islands are low-lying um, uh, islands. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some of them, uh, the, the highest uh, point would be about one meter above um, sea level. So the, the sea level rise is a, is a problem. Um, the increased frequency of uh, uh, natural uh, disasters, um, as well as you know the impact of uh, increasing uh, temperatures on on uh, on agriculture as as well as um, health, uh, so that that also impacts on on uh, the small island uh, uh, states, and uh, Tonga is is one of the most vulnerable uh, countries in terms also. Of of you know disaster uh, a risk as well um, and and um, uh, some of the other small island developing states are, are following mm -hmm. uh, close behind yeah. mm -hmm. well you're watching global connections television which is a privately funded independently produced program the opinions expressed on global connections are solely those of the moderator and his guests we would invite our viewers to go to our website at www.globalconnectionstelevision.com to view previous programs. Also, if you are involved with any type of media outlet, be it a PBS or community access television station, or perhaps it's an educational institution that has an intra campus hookup, or you just have a website and you'd like to share our programs, please feel free to do so. Global Connections Television is provided free of charge as a public service to help us better understand international issues and how they impact our lives. Today we're taking a look at a very interesting organization, the United Nations Agency, agency that works with the least developed countries, the landlocked developing countries, and the small island developing states. And we're going to look at some of the issues and challenges confronting these groups. My guest today is an expert in this area. My guest today is Her Excellency Fekita, who is a national of Tonga. She is the Under Secretary General and High Representative for the United Nations Office for the Least Developing Countries, Landlocked Developing Countries, and Small Island Developing States. You've encompassed 91 countries yes. and uh, some, uh, a very long title here for this yes. office, but a very important group yes. of countries. Yes. It's very, very important. Now, we were talking about the Small Island Developing States before we get off of uh, this particular group. Uh, well, let's look at all three together. Do yeah. they interact as a group? Are they, do they have, they're in, you deal with them with your office. They work together as a group of 91, but they're involved in other organiza uh, regional organizations too, are they not? Like the group of 77 yes, yes. or uh, some other yes. type of um, yeah. uh, regional group. Yes, so right. they, they, are in, they have uh, arrangements in a, a variety of different settings to focus on their problems. Yes. Well, um, the um, grouping that uh, you know the the 91 um, countries and the and the three groupings that our office uh, works in, um, and then for each of the uh, groups, uh, we have a uh, program of action. Uh, we mm -hmm. know which targets the um, th the main uh, problem, the priority uh, areas uh, that uh, each of the uh, uh, groups um, um, focus on. Um, so for the uh, s uh, small island uh, developing states, we have the Samoa pathway. Um, for the least developed uh, countries, we have the Istanbul program of action. And for the landlocked uh, developing countries, we have the Istanbul uh, plan of action. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, these uh, uh, programs of actions are like for every, te uh, every 10 years, um, we, we, uh, mm -hmm. we review and uh, come up with a new uh, program of, of, of action. And um, 
And so uh, it, it is now uh, also quite linked to uh, the uh, uh, sustainable development um, goals um, as well. Um, and uh, the, the, the groupings uh, also, because of the similarities of the issues, uh, make it, uh, I guess, uh, easier to, you know, to work um, as a group in dealing, for, for example, in uh, transport and transit mm -hmm. um, and trade issues with the uh, um, landlocked uh, developing uh, countries as well as, you know, the, the issues of climate change and, um, and others with the um, uh, small island developing uh, states. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, the, uh, you were talking about the Samoa pathway, is yes. that correct? Yes. It, 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 what is, uh, this deals with small island developing states. Yes. Right, and uh, this is basically a work plan, yes. a program yes. on different uh, suggestions on how that they can yes. factor in to help yes. develop their economies to avoid being adversely affected yes. by climate change yes. and, and different steps like that? Yes. Yes, um, so um, the initial uh, program of action for the, for the uh, small island developing states was the Mauritius uh, plan of, of, of action. Uh, and then uh, the, you know, the small, uh, the Samoa pathway is like an uh, accelerated uh, program uh, for, for implementation of the program of action for the uh, small island uh, developing um, states. And, uh, you know, as you noted, it um, includes all the uh, uh, relevant um, areas of priority. Uh, including climate uh, change, oceans is also quite an important mm -hmm. um, area of importance to the small island uh, d uh, developing uh, states, uh, oceans, fisheries, um, education, health, um, culture is also a, a, an important uh, area for the small island uh, uh, states. And then, you know, you've got good governance and uh, uh, gender equality and, and human rights uh, also part of the uh, Samoa uh, pathway as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. It sounds like a fascinating study. Yes. I, I'm sure many of our viewers are going to Google Samoa pathway yes. and l yes. learn a lot more about yes. it. The, there was a publication that came out not long ago. I don't want to not mention this, but it's the State of the Least Developed Countries 2017. Yes. Uh, what were the ma some of the main recommendations yes. from that particular study? Well, the um, the the publication uh, on the on the s uh, state of the LDC uh, just look briefly at um, how the LDCs uh, would were faring in uh, implementing uh, the uh, Istanbul uh, program of uh, action um, it found that um, that uh, the uh, success of uh, implementation was quite mixed um, but the report uh, also focused on, on the financing options uh, available for least developed uh, countries uh, in order to, uh, to finance the implementation <laughs> of the uh, SDGs. Um, the uh, domestic uh, financing across the L um, LDC group, I think, only uh, represented 15% uh, of the total. Um, so uh, it, uh, the LDCs still um, largely depend on uh, ODA uh, for financing mm -hmm. of their um, development uh, efforts. There were some targets uh, set um, in the Istanbul Plan of Action for um, you know the levels for the uh, uh, the development partners uh, to meet. I think uh, in terms of uh, trend, the level, the total level of uh, financing from ODA to the uh, LD LDC group has decreased, mm -hmm. you know, over 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 the over <coughs> the years. Uh, so the the report was looking at how um, the LDC could um, uh, put together a a uh, package of funding mm -hmm. uh, to to assist the countries in implementation. So it has climate, you know, the climate uh, uh, ch uh, funding, um, as well as uh, uh, ODA, as well as domestic uh, resources. Mm -hmm. 
Now you mentioned ODA, uh, the Official yes. Development Assistance. That's is right. that what that yes. Official That's Development right. Assistance? And that was said it was seven tenths of one percent of yes. GNPs uh, yes. in the countries around the world. Yeah. But there's been a reduction in that. Is that it correct? That's right. Um, I think the overall the um, some countries have uh, have met. Uh, the uh, targets, uh, and then uh, o over the years, uh, you know, some of those countries have have uh, been uh, sort of regressed from uh, meeting uh, those targets, and it's just also an uh, indication of um, the global economic and financial uh, situation because the the, the level of uh, funding that is uh, available uh, also depends very much on the uh, situation of the uh, donor countries as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I mentioned before, you're from the uh, Kingdom of Tonga. Yes. And there are, I think, in the archipelago, like 169 islands. Yes. And of that, about 34 or 36 are inhabited. Yes. And you have a total population of about 105,000 yes. people. And so you're spread out in a very beautiful area of the world yes. in, in the South Pacific. Yeah. But uh, we were talking about climate change. Yes. And we mentioned, I mentioned a minute ago about Fiji and that horrific cyclone yes. that hit Fiji. Uh, have you noticed or uh, are there indications that Tonga has been adversely affected by climate change? Uh, yes, uh, there, there has been uh, impact of uh, climate change in, mm -hmm. uh, in Tonga in terms of uh, uh, more frequency of uh, uh, natural um, uh, uh, disasters, uh, increase in, uh, in in the temperature. The, the mm -hmm. level uh, sea uh, level has also um, uh, risen as well. The, the uh, it also has impacted on um, um, rainfall and uh, you know in inundation of the uh, coastal er areas and, and erosion mm -hmm. uh, is also uh, a big uh, big issue and uh, you know uh, Tonga as as well as uh, a lot of the countries in a small um, uh, island developing states have been Im impacted in similar ways mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they certainly have there's yes. no doubt about that yeah. as, as you look at in the last minute or so that we have left as you look at this situation, and again, <coughs> representing 91, or interacting with yes. 91 countries, many that are similar, but still have yes. dissimilar uh, goals and objectives at times and problems. But uh, is there one major challenge that you see out there as we look ahead uh, well into the 21st century affecting these 91 countries? And, and really, we could say every country of the world, but in particular to this group, is there one challenge yeah. that, uh, that we should try to overcome? I think one of the um, the challenges uh, that uh, impacts on all um, three countries, and is one that we, um, uh, as uh, uh, the main um, advocacy for for the 91 countries in the UN uh, system, is is in the issue of uh, finances that's available, um, and so our office also has that function of uh, uh, trying to mobilize uh, funding for the uh, 91 um, countries uh, as well. Um, so, um, you know, in, in addition, you know, there, there are other uh, issues uh, as well, but uh, I would say that, uh, you know, uh, financing for, uh, for development is, uh, is, is one of the major issues across the 91 countries. Mm, it mm -hmm. certainly is. And with so many of these problems, they, they have to have funding. You have yes. to have the financial uh -huh. wherewithal, as well as the technical yes. resources to uh -huh. deal with it. But without the funding, not much uh -huh. will get done. Yes. And it's very important that we focus on uh -huh. that. And again, let me remind our viewers, they can go to your website at www.unohrlls.org, yes. and that's going to take them right into uh -huh. your website to where you're talking about the least developed countries, the small island development developing states, and the landlocked developing countries. And again, this these countries are so very important, especially as we move forward and working towards achieving the sustainable development goals to yes. eliminate poverty, to eliminate hunger, 
to reverse or stop, hopefully stop, but certainly try to reverse climate change, change to yes. making sure that the oceans mm -hmm. are preserved, to empower women, just on across to all 17 of them. And these are so very valuable yes. and so important that we mobilize ourselves to do that. But uh, Ms. Madam Undersecretary General Fekita, I want to thank you so very yes. much for being with me today and bringing us up to date on this very yes. important issue. Thank and you. Thank you for a very interesting yeah. and a very informative yeah. program. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. I'm Bill Miller. Thank you for joining us today on Global Connections Television.